my lady, I, I really must insist on speaking to you about the gardener. Is it your wish that I should take my orders from this shiver of the week? Uh, such a person who prefers a company of pigs cannot tell me what I should or should not do with my silverware. Ah, yes, the silverware for the reception. Can you believe I found young Angus digging, yes, digging in the soil with a silver soup spoon? And who gave it to him? Oh, the gardener, that's who, Matthew Tomlinson. And he was from the Queen Anne set. And what he told me, young Angus, I could do with a spoon. Well, it's not fit for the ears of a lady. Ah, yes, young Angus. My report to the guardians about his progress was written yesterday. He will be happier in one of those scatter homes than in the workhouse orphanage. Did you manage to send it? Uh, I'm sorry, my lady. I forgot what with all that's going on. I, I'll ask Daisy to send it immediately. Please see to that, Gerald. And don't worry about the spoon. I'm sure it will be fine after a good clean, no matter where it's been. Oh, my dear, how exciting! I've just seen Dr. Herman, who says the training for the first company is nearly finished! Darling, I've just been petitioned by the ladies from the Guild of Pity and Miss Bowman. Really, my dear, these ladies absolutely cannot attend my county hall portrait unveiling. It's not the place for them. Darling, will you please speak with them? Why they cannot be content to just attend the St. John Ambulance dedication ceremony today, I do not know. I... King, I... Um, do you beg your pardon, then? <clears throat> uh, my dear, would you be so kind to look at this ledger for me? The sales of the Alpine plants have nearly covered the cost of the St. John uniforms, but I doubt my own abilities in the art of mathematics at times. Yes, of course, my dear. Uh, glad to be of assistance. Um, the sooner we can help our forces, the better. We live in uncertain times, and it is best to be prepared. <laughs> Mrs. King. John Ambulance Association in the whole of Yorkshire. Your patriotic county company is ready for the parade. The Horbury Scouts are looking as smart as new pins. The nursing corps, massing number 27. 27, Catherine. 27 women all trained and ready to assist. I hear that Leeds, York and Barnsley are forming branches now. Soon we will have the whole of the North trained, organised and drilled. My dear, you seem fatigued. Are you not well? My dear Mrs King, you know how I often feel the need to sit quietly. Perhaps to read a little, to walk in the garden of my soul as Mr. Spencer so eloquently writes about. Retrieved from Mr. Tomlinson, I take it. But it's damaged. It's outrageous. Madam the Silver, we shall be short of a soup spoon this evening. Please ask Mr. Tomlinson to come and see me, Gerald. I shall come to the kitchen below stairs so as not to inconvenience his boots. But the Kitchen is no place for a lady. Do not worry, Gerald. There will be no repercussions. His lordship is busy with the accounts. You never do get a moment, do you? I shall leave you to your soul food. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, Miss Louisa Clarkson wishes to see you. I saw her in town earlier. Something about the AGM at the Shepherd's Rest. And yet, Mr. Tomlinson, your grandfather states quite clearly here, if homosexuality is in their nature, then it must be considered as natural. 
but not from any uniform, uh, surely, Mr. James. But your namesake continues. It appears a paradox to me how men, who are men, should possess such a passion. And more particularly so if it is in their nature from childhood, as I am informed it is. If they feel such an inclination and propensity at that certain time of life when youth genders into manhood, then it must be considered as natural. Otherwise, as a defect in nature, it seems cruel to punish that defect with death. I see you have returned Mr. Thomas and Senior's diary. I really must restrict your choices from the library. Dear Matthew, you do look smart. Are you all ready for this afternoon? I look to you and Daisy to represent all that is best of the St. John Ambulance and Thorns House. Yes, madam. Thank you, madam. Daisy is so very much looking forward to it. Uh, she asks, madam, when the nurses will be going into Clayton Hospital. Oh, indeed, Lady Catherine. When will your nurses be heading into Clayton Hospital? Mr. James, really? Matthew, Daisy is doing very well indeed at the Victoria Nursing Hospital. And there is as much need there as there is at Clayton, if not more. Now, go along in your terribly, terribly smart uniform and, and keep the standard high. Oh, and Matthew, don't forget to take your spoon with you. And please, could you inspect Anne's fountain on the way? The parade will be going past that way and I'd like it to be looking its best. And whilst you are there, please call on Miss Clarkson to let her know that I plan to call around midday. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Daisy, that pretty parlour maid you rescued and admitted to the Lupsic convalescence home. Yes, yes, yes. I'd love to photograph her sometime. Oh, being so very, very pretty often prevents her from seeing that paupers have the same ailments as the rich. At least with the poor, we see the grime. But even those born with a silver spoon in their mouths are not immune, eh, Catherine, my dear? Oh, Henry, I have missed you, if not your and Daisy is a very clever girl and very proficient in her reading and writing. Our workhouse education program is clearly working. I hear you made it to the Literary Society last night. I'm sorry I didn't go with so much to do for today, but I take it that Gertrude managed well enough. Oh, yes, my dear. We discussed the uh, contentious contents of this here diary. Uh -huh. Your Reverend Canon and Cameron at the Unitarian Chapel certainly preached some interesting ideas <laughs> 60 years ago. According to Mr. Tomlinson, that is. Yes, there was great intellectual discussion about the, the morality and authenticity of the diary. Miss John Mackey had a little <gasps> swoon in protest, I do think, but was soon revived with a little bit of her favorite tipple. Yes, Miss McCrobin was also keen to borrow it. Her new city history library, uh-huh. Did you know about that, Catherine, my dear? Oh, yes, I've donated some of our Greek texts to oh, her. that poor Mrs. Mackey, she couldn't get a word in. I say the girls' school will have all of her land for their hockeys and their high teas if she's not careful. What? <clears throat> if I'd have known you'd been giving away the silverware, Catherine, I would have been here much earlier. Daisy and Matthew are due to be wed next month. And I've given the spoon to Matthew as his Welsh love spoon. They have lovely traditions in Wales, don't you think? I feel that the ladies of Langolan oh, were great The ladies of Langolan! Now there is a scandal and a half. Imagine if that were to come up as a, a topic well, of I'll conversation. Well, I'll need to Gerald off the scent, but no matter. I will tell him that the spoon is terribly damaged and needs replacing. It's so good to see you, Henry. I am so pleased to, that you are coming to our dedication service. My dear, I wouldn't have missed today for the world. I mean, my word, an unveiling of your dear, dear husband's portrait at the county hall and a registration of Yorkshire's first county corps. All those dapper men in uniform, where would I be more suited? How is Charles, by the way? Still riding high on your coattails, my dear? Oh, he does little, it is true, but his little goes so very far. Shall we walk into the garden and onto Alberthorpe Hall? Mouse needs a walk. Mouse! <laughs> Daisy! <laughs> oh, 
Don't even think about it, Matthew Tomlinson. I've spent far too much time getting ready for you to dislodge my new hat. Besides, I mustn't be long. I've got a very important letter to deliver. Inspecting the fountain, I see. Well, let me have a little read of this. Uh, this fountain. I can't quite make it out. Would you help an old man in return for a photograph? Oh, um, of course, Mr. James. <laughs> this fountain was placed here by friends of Anne Clarkson of Westgate Bridge and by members of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals to commemorate her lifelong labours in the cause of humanity and in recognition of her untiring efforts to lessen the suffering of dumb creatures, 1888. My dear, splendid. Now, for this photograph. <laughs> I'll give that one to Lady Catherine. She can take it as a wedding present. Uh, Miss Speak. Uh, good, good day. Good day, Mr. James. Good day, Daisy. Matthew. Mary. You must burn this one. It's from 1866 when Francis Power Cobb came to preach at the chapel. It must be full of unsavoury information. Aunt Clara's code was clever, but look, H, Henry. If they'd have been left to me, I would have burnt them all. You've been dallying about for the last 20 years. Why you had to bring this diary here today, I do not know, honestly. I know, Louisa, I know. I've had yet another letter this morning petitioning me to destroy them, and from the Ashtons, no less. Aunt Clara is dead. Will they not leave this alone? It's Anne's family I feel sorry for, and poor Ada. People cross the street rather than speak to her. Honestly, people in glass houses. It's not like I even know what's written in them. They're just incomprehensible squiggles. It's all such nonsense. Incomprehensible squiggles or not, there are secrets in there that must remain exactly that, secrets. Aunt Clara did no one any favours leaving Anne Ashton all that money. And Anne didn't help Ada by leaving her all that property. And you, you Mary, you're not doing yourself any favours by having that particular branch of the Ashtons on your land either. Oh, pish. Neither of us lost out financially, and you got Alva Thorpe Hall. It was up to Aunt Clara to leave her money to whomever she chose. I remember your father's reaction. Goodness me, he was not happy. The tone of his letters petitioning the destruction of those diaries at the time still makes me shudder. Poor Anne. She never really got over it. I've never seen him so red and bluster than when he found out Aunt Clara had bequeathed the diaries to you. He went into his study for four days and he only came out when he needed more ink. The trustees must have dreaded the post. You did well to resist pressure to burn the remaining diaries along with the first 20. But I do feel, Mary, the time has come. Our association with Lady Catherine must not be put in jeopardy and my work with the RSPCA must be free from taint. Aunt Anne would not have agreed with that sentiment, but then she rarely agreed with anyone who tried to cage her. She and Aunt Clara were very much alike. Ada, how lovely to see you. Please sit down. You look unwell, my dear. Ada, what's the matter? It's always so very difficult to walk through Wakefield, especially past Anne's fountain. Will people never forget? I wanted to thank you for giving my uncle his tenancy on your land, and also to let you know that he is planning on building a pair of cottages. I also understand that certain family members are petitioning you once again about these diaries. Ada, do not distress yourself. We'll speak about this later. I'm sure Lady Catherine will assist in the situation. Florence, how lovely to see you. What brings you here? Good afternoon, ladies. Ada, how lovely to see you again. 
We've not had a chance to catch up since the suffragist march. Your quick thinking and actions on where to put Miss Beaver when things got sticky during the main speeches was inspired. <laughs> I'm not sure the pigs in that sty appreciated their unexpected visitor, but uh, it certainly gave the paper something to write about. <laughs> the boring will echo with the protest of pigs for months to come. Florence, I'm not sure that kind of humour is appropriate. Oh, Lou, you sound just like your father and Aunt Anne. In fact, Aunt Clara writes about Aunt Anne, making the very uh, same statement. I, I, I thought you said you hadn't deciphered the code, Mary. May I see? Ah, 1866. The year of the first suffragist petition. It has not been decoded. This was such a momentous year, Mary. It would be a terrible shame for our city's history if these diaries were to be lost. I understand that Mr Henry James is in town. Whilst ever he is here, I would be very nervous that Aunt Clara's diaries would not be featured at some literacy society or other, should they not remain in our constant care. Yes, well, I understand your reticence. However, it is hardly Lady Catherine's fault if Mr. James helps himself to books in her private collection. Mary, I've actually come to see you, to see if you would speak alongside Mrs. Henry Fawcett next week at the Music Salon. She is due to speak about the cause, and it would be wonderful if you, as a signatory and supporter of the 1866 suffrage petition, would stand with Millicent. Unless there is something in these diaries that would prevent you from speaking. Even if there were, Miss Beaumont, I'd be letting the women of our town down if I did not speak. I'd be delighted to, Florence. Thank you. Wonderful. I will send word with the details. And I will see you all this evening at Lady Catherine's dedication. What a shame it is that our sex are not invited to the other event occurring today. I have petitioned Mr. Gaskill about our deliberate exclusion and have heard nothing. So one can only assume he is towing the party line again. Oh, Florence, there are protocols to be followed. Ha! It seems to me that Mr. Gaskill is quite content to take the credit for Lady Catherine's and other people's hard work as he retires. But this is both unkind. And if you'll pardon me for saying exceedingly disrespectful. I absolutely agree with you, Florence. Thank you, Mary. I shall take my leave. Good day, ladies. Uh, uh, may I walk with you, Miss Jones? Of course. Thank you for your kind words earlier, Miss Florence. Oh? About, um, the pits. Oh, yes. Ada, might you be interested in coming along to the next suffragist meeting at Hatfield Hall? Quite frankly, I could do with more women like you. Quick thinkers who are not afraid to act. Um, I'm really not quite sure. Um, I understand, I was... Ada. It's quite all right. Just think about it. One mustn't allow past prejudices to curtail your voice, Ada. If being in the public eye does not suit you, then there are plenty of other roles for you, should you choose. Hello, Miss Beaumont. Hello, Ada. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Lady Catherine. Lady Catherine, would you mind speaking with Miss Clarkson about acquiring some of Miss Clara Clarkson's diaries for your private library? I feel they would be quite safe with you. And poor Mary needs a solution to a problem that she is once again faced with. Of course, my dear. Ada, would that suit you? Or perhaps we should put them on the fire as before? That would suit me very well, Lady Catherine. Um, the acquiring, I mean, not the firing. I am very much looking forward to your fundraiser this evening at the Corn Exchange, madam. After the main event, of course. Uh, a portrait of the Honourable Mr Gaskell is being unveiled later today at County Hall, Ada. His gaze will forever now be upon us. I saw the marriage notice for Leonard Fulton in the newspaper, my dear. I, uh, I must go, ladies. Please wait for me at Anne's Fountain, Ada. I shan't be long. I'm so sorry. Did you and Mr. Beaumont manage to go? My brother and his wife went. 
my father and I sent pewter plates. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, I really am. Sometimes great sacrifices of the heart are inescapable. Sometimes they are, Lady Catherine, indeed. Sometimes they are. Please do come to Charles's portrait unveiling this evening. I know that you have petitioned him, but I believe his agreement to your request may have been lost in the business of the day. I would be delighted to, thank you. Oh, Lady Catherine, thank you for coming. Would you care for some tea? Annie's scones are delicious. Louisa, my dear, may I thank you for your ever-constant work with the RSPCA. Your effort and dedication to the cause is, is inspirational. The date that has been set for the AGM is perfect, and I am delighted that the Shepherd's Rest has agreed to host once more. Would you mind terribly, my dear, if we paused at Anne's Fountain on our celebration march this afternoon to pay our respects to your aunt's work? Well, the welfare of the animals is, is just as important as the welfare of our soldiers. Of course, Lady Catherine. Aunt Anne would be so proud. May I be of assistance? Lady Catherine, they continue to cause some distress for some members of the family, and I'm at a loss as to know what to do with the remaining ones. I've had yet more demands to destroy them. But I'm determined not to do that. To burn the remaining journals would be sacrilege. If only the chattel would take them and care for them, but... Why not let me take them, Mary? Or at least those that you feel need protecting. I will keep them safe in my private library. And if idle chatter were to suggest that they have been destroyed, then, then let people believe it. Oh, Lady Catherine, that's so very kind. May we speak about it between us and let you know? Of course, my dear. Ladies, excuse my interruption. Lady Catherine, shall we return to Thorne's house? The St. John Ambulance dedication service begins in less than an hour. And I hear from young Matthew, Mr. Gaskell is already dressed, ready to receive all of the accolades he feels he deserves. All that is missing for him now is a pretty thing upon his arm. Mr. James, you'd be wise not to let Miss Beaumont hear you say such things. Indeed, I've just seen Florence and Ada at Anne's Fountain, looking as formidable as ever. I very much look forward to some sort of insurrection from her later on. <laughs> Lady Catherine. My dear, you really have done a marvellous job of decorating the county hall. Do I recognize some of the designs in the foliage from the Waves and Strays Festival? I recall Princess Christian being most complimentary. That was one of the highlights of my career. Bead House remains a guiding light for our community. You did well to spot young Matthew had such potential and get him a place. We must thank the ladies from the Church of England Society for their vision and skill with regards to the foliage. I am terribly proud of Matthew. He really has excelled himself this afternoon. And I know that he wishes to make the unveiling of your portrait memorable. It really is a dignified end to your time as the chairman of the county council. Your work as a justice of the peace in these final years has made such a difference. Oh, my dear. Thank you. I have been happy to help those less fortunate than ourselves and send them to your most noble alternatives rather than prison. However, I am sure the speeches will be long and tedious. It's a good job the ladies are not here. They would find it intolerable, I've no doubt. Being a Justice of the Peace is a role that I would love to undertake, and I feel that I'm ready. Charles, perhaps we might discuss that at some point. My dear, you were only saying to me this morning that you didn't have time to finish reading your books. So with all your other work on, I doubt taking on anything extra would be wise. I... Besides, I should like you by my side more in my retirement.
Ah, the Let Sisters, my dear, Phyllis and Eva, as you requested. Thank you, Henry. I do miss Phyllis. Her voice is divine. That contralto sound is astonishing. Well, she is making such a difference in the education of girls. Indeed. I think that Eva's work will certainly lead to more women publishing. Now, speaking of, how many pieces have you published now, Catherine, my dear? Ten. But the reviews have been mixed. Please do not take my essays to your literary salons, Henry, my dear. I'm not sure how much more male scrutiny I can take on my words. Piss the reviews, Catherine. Your a Shropshire lad and lass is absolute genius. As is prose idols of the West Riding. What those reviewers didn't like is the way in which you interpret the story from the woman's perspective. Something which I understand from the women I listen to is entirely different to that of their farming husbands. I mean, you capture the dialogue and the dialect perfectly. I write what I hear and I paint what I see. The stories of our farming folk fascinate me, Henry, and they are much more fulfilling than the smaller pieces for the lady. You were a true patron of the arts, my dear. And now that you have the same publisher as Mr. George Gissing and those rather delightful Bronte sisters, those nasty little reviewer hacks will eat their words. <laughs> They're just jealous, Catherine. Look at you, and look at this. Henry, what is she doing here? Uh, Florence Beaumont, the suffragist leader, Charles. Uh, I understand Lady Catherine is more than sympathetic to the uh, cause. God. Ah, but it, it appears she is merely here in order to put uh, uh, decorations up for the evening. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. I say, Charles, have you seen this portrait of a very important man over here? Oh, say. Oh, no! Oh, Lord Henry, what the... Uh, the These women <laughs> do realize they are not invited here. The lovely Miss Mary Clarkson, Charles, one of the first women to sign the suffragist petition of 1866. Yes, I understand she and your dear wife are rather adepts at gathering funds in order for the, the poor of our society to access education, Charles. Uh, she's also in cahoots with Miss McCrobin in founding the first uh, city history library, yes. which Catherine is also greatly contributed to. But nothing to worry about, for I, I believe she is here merely to provide further decoration for the evening. Uh, nothing to worry about. Mm. Oh, I say. Have you seen this portrait of a rather very important man? Oh. Whoa! Uh, Daisy! Isn't that the servant girl from the house? Uh, I see she has more decorations. Oh, you know. yes, sir. Uh, she can read now, Daisy. Uh, thanks to your good lady wife, she's in training to become a nurse at the Victoria District Institute. Well looked after by Lady Catherine, of course, as vice president. Uh, between Mrs. Mackey and uh, your dear spouse, the poor of this town get all the medical attention they deserve. Doesn't she look well? It's the free breakfast she got as a child from the breakfast mission Lady Catherine yes. continues to support. Oh, Daisy is a pretty young thing. I captured a fine image of her earlier by Miss Anne's fountain. But yes, well, Henry, I'm not sure the art of photography will ever replace real art. Here, let me show you what I mean. Have you ever seen such dignity captured in a man than in this very important portrait. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> uh, would you like a drink, Mr. James? Uh -huh. Ah, 
Uh, I see Matthew is here as my guardsman. Matthew, would you mind escorting the ladies out once they are finished with their decorations? I, uh, it's not appropriate that they are here once things start, you know? Yes, sir. Of course, sir. A good lad, then. Orphan, don't you know, huh? Mm. A fine product of a, a, a Lady Catherine Scatterhome scheme. A, her ladyship remains one of the most able poor law guardians in the city, does she not, Charles? But she keeps bringing them to the kitchen door. I fear for the silver. Oh, quite. <laughs> Indeed you do. Uh, I say, Charles, uh, have I ever told you about the short story I wrote based on this uh, very important man? Oh, here. oh dear. What is she doing here? This is getting ridiculous. My guests are starting to arrive. Charles, and I, Charles, I don't want them being reminded Charles. of that scandal. I, I, I... Ada Speak is merely here to assist in the decorations. Oh, I hear she's getting along well in society now, thanks to generosity on behalf of Miss Anne Aston. And of course, her work with Lady Catherine and the Guild of Pity is invaluable. The garments she stitches for the poor of this town are of the finest quality. Yes, Lady Catherine is always happy to help those less fortunate than ourselves. This is true. But I do wish all these ladies would leave. Why is Matthew not escorting them out? Uh, indeed, huh? indeed. Uh, how about we spend a minute with our dear friend over here? I know how very important he was to, to you and to the great city of Wakefield, yeah. Charles. Indeed. <laughs> oh, my. It's the animal lady. Miss Louisa Clarkson, of course, the, the very spitting image of her Aunt Anne. Ah, uh, yes, her love of animals is well known throughout the town. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous now, Henry. I must put a stop to this right Mom now. Calm yourself, Charles. Uh, Lady Catherine's love of animals is also well known. Let us not go uh, spilling the apple cart on your big night, eh? Besides, I believe they are merely here in order to put the finishing touches to the decorations in honor of you. Uh, yes. Well, Lady Catherine is very active in the RSPCA, and Lord knows we've enough dogs. There's a graveyard full of them in the grounds of Thorne's house. <laughs> uh, remarkable woman, my wife. I've lost count of how many presidencies Lady Catherine holds. I'd like to raise a glass to my wife. Here you are, sir. To Lady Catherine. To, to Lady, Lady Catherine. Catherine. Oh, hmm. Damn fine wine, that. What are fennels? Indeed it is, sir. Ah, the fennels. I, I believe they were involved in the Guild of Pity around the same time Miss, Miss Catherine was president. Yes, sir. And the, uh, the Clarksons as well. Yeah, damn fine wine cellar that chap Fennel runs. Hmm. My wife has a piece by Miss Fennel in her study. Louisa Fennel, I believe. Yes, sir. Indeed, and, and what a shame it was that Miss Fennel was not commissioned to, to paint your portrait, Charles. Oh, woman, doing my portrait, Henry? <laughs> Don't be absurd! Oh, my, oh, my, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> well, this could get interesting. Uh, Master Happy and his glass full, Mr. Gerald, please. Ah, Gerald. My lord, uh, may I say what a wonderful likeness this portrait is, ah, and a yes. fitting tribute to your achievements. What would we have done without your vision and your ability to use such insight to help and better mankind? Well, yes, quite, Gerald, yes, thank you. Uh, may I say... Thank you for your work here this evening, especially after the exuberance of this afternoon's dedication ceremony to the St. John Ambulance Corps. However, I do wish these ladies would leave. Why is Matthew not escorting them out? Go and get Matthew, Gerald. Oh, I say, Charles, this is absolute genius. You know, I've just been talking with some of the gentlemen and Mr. King who just arrived. My, they... They are impressed that the ladies seem to be here. What? Oh, I think it's about time we drug all these draconian institutions into, into well, this century, don't you? It is 1910 after all, Charles. Well, yes, quite. I, I, uh... Well, Mr. Henry, 
welcome esteemed members of the community to this momentous occasion. And so I am delighted to dedicate this evening's celebrations for her work in our town, for her never ending fundraising efforts for the poor and disadvantaged. Lady Catherine's contributions to our society must never be forgotten. And so it is with the greatest pleasure that we gift her this token of our appreciation in honor of her work. Oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> thank you.